Hey there, everyone, and I thank you guys so much for tuning in to yet another episode of My Orchid Adventures with me, Maria Young. Okay, first and foremost, I have to say Merry, 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 Merry Christmas to me. Because indeed, Orchid Santa has come through and I am feeling quite like a child on Christmas morning because I received some pretty interesting and some pretty phenomenally special orchids if I do say so myself. Some orchids that I just would not have believed that I could get my hands on but I did. So indeed this holiday season is just absolutely a fabulous. So as of recently, folks, I have been like totally engrossed with species orchids, especially the species Phalaenopsis orchids. And I am just so delighted and thrilled to find out some of the characteristics that they have. Okay, so the first orchid on our list comes from Sophie's Orchids and Things, and they are out of St. Paul, Minnesota. And let me go ahead and show you all of their information just in case you want to order from them. And I actually purchased this from eBay and I have to tell you it was very professionally wrapped. As you can see it has that cotton fiber material and also it was taped down pretty well. And it was all wrapped up in this newspaper right here, all taped up nicely. And also we had some other material in here to protect it as well. And they also had a heat pad in here to protect it from the cold and this was absolutely free they just put it in there to ensure that their orchids would come safe and sound to you and also they provided me if I could get to it this nice little pen as well so very nicely packed nice and neat and definitely came to me safe and sound as you can see here and also, as an added bonus, they offered me 10% off of my next purchase of $20 or more. So, definitely quite a nice gesture. And this right here, folks, is a Cedria japonica. And it is a species Phalaenopsis and of seedling size. And as you can see, it's very hardy and it is very, very healthy. Next on our list are these two species Phalaenopsis coming from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And this is from Louisiana Orchid Connections, also LA Orchids on eBay. And as you can see, these were also very well wrapped in that cotton fiber material, also taped down very well, wrapped up in newspaper. And if we look in here, you are also seeing the styrofoam in here as well. So indeed, definitely packaged up is really, really nice. And as a thoughtful gesture, they did send a little thank you card. Well, thank you, LA Orchids. I am definitely very happy with my purchase. And this one right here in particular is a Phalaenopsis javanica, near bloom size. And as you can see, very, very healthy plant. Wow, just so beautiful and shiny. And this Phalaenopsis right here is a Phalaenopsis Marie. And as you can see also, this is very, very healthy and is of bloom size. And Louisiana Orchid Connection, also known as LA Orchids on eBay, I have to say I have ordered from them before. And all of their orchids that I've received, I have been more than happy with. Very healthy orchids and quite a wide variety of species orchids as well and at such great prices. And these orchids right here are coming from Marimar, Florida. And I purchased these orchids from an eBay vendor by the name of Eve Dawn. And these orchids were also very well packaged in this paper towel, all wrapped up and taped. And also it was wrapped in newspaper as well. And if we look further in the box, we also have a lot of shredded newspaper for protection. So indeed, this orchid was also packaged very nice and neat. 
And these particular orchids are Vandopsis, Gigantia, Hopbrook, crossed with self. As you can see, these orchids came to me very, very healthy. And this was actually advertised as four seedlings, but I actually got five. So I don't know if I got a bonus or that was in there by accident, but thank you very much because I sure do appreciate these nice, healthy seedlings. And let the unwrapping begin. Ta-da! And this right here, folks, indeed is my pride and joy. This is a Phalaenopsis gigantea, and oh my, this is quite a special orchid right here. T.D. Moore actually influenced me. Yeah, you did it, my friend. Influenced me into getting one of these because he had stated that this indeed was hands down one of his most favorite Phalaenopsis species orchids. And I definitely can see why. Because, folks, these actually will bloom in such a huge spray of spotted blossoms that are absolutely fragrant. And you don't cut off the spikes unless they turn brown. And these are actually dead, so nothing to worry about with those. I just left those on. But these can actually rebloom for years, so you definitely don't want to cut those spikes off. But indeed, this is a Phalaenopsis gigantea. And indeed, this is quite a phenomenal orchid because this can actually get quite large in size. So anyone out there, folks, that doesn't have the space, this actually isn't one of those orchids for you because this can get pretty massive. Now, I got this orchid right here at one of my most favored places in the whole wide world. You guys already know Tom Ritter's orchids. And wow, they amaze me every time I go because... I always seem to find exactly what I'm looking for. And again, now I've gotten into this craze with species Phalaenopsis, so to find out that they have just a vast variety of these species, whoa, like totally blew me away, and I'm just so happy right now. And look here, folks, this is yet another rare treat for me because this is a Bulbophyllum Phalaenopsis. And this can also get quite ginormous, folks. This is known to get about 12 feet long and even bigger than that. So, oh my goodness. Now, of course, this has a bloom that is quite unique. One of the most unique blooms I've ever seen. And it's usually red or maroonish in color and very hairy. Reminds me of a tarantula blossom but indeed it's very, very unique. Now the only thing that I'm kind of skeptical on is it does have such a smelly fragrance, smelling much like, what do they say, rotting flesh? Ew, oh my, because in the wild this actually attracts flies, which is its natural pollinator. And this Bulbophyllum phalaenopsis is also coming from Tom Ritter's orchids. And let me not forget this very special, very unique orchid also right here from Tom Ritter's orchids. This is an Oncidium, believe it or not, with its Tourette leaves. Also very spindly and very piney right here, which does not remind you of an Oncidium, but indeed it is. And taking a look at these wonderful, unique blossoms, you will also see why I consider this one a very special Oncidium. And this very unique orchid right here is coming from Tom Ritter's orchids as well, and this is the Oncidium cobalata. And these Vandopsis right here are quite a special find indeed. You don't normally find these in cultivation, and they're not readily available and are pretty much hard to find. So I was conversating with the seller, and I had asked her exactly how long would these take to bloom. And she actually stated that these would take five to seven years. Oh my! But one thing, folks, I will have to tell you, it is definitely worth the wait if you're able to wait that long, which I'm going to be biting my nails to 
see these blossoms. I had actually told her that I might have to have paramedics on standby because you know what? I might just simply pass out from all of the excitement and that's with no exaggeration, folks. I just simply cannot wait till these blooms. Now, this Vanda-like orchid actually will grow so massive. They've been known to grow between five to eight feet tall. Believe it or not, folks. Believe it or not. And the blooms on these Vandopsis are absolutely phenomenal, blooming in a yellow and also red and maroonish colors, exposing some spottings and also a very nice pattern. And also on the lip and the back of the blossom has a very interesting magenta color that is also intermingled in the blossom as well. And these blossoms are very fragrant and also bloom in quite an abundance. And this orchid right here, the Sideria japonica, native to Japan, is a very beautiful species that blooms such a unique blossom. The blossoms are colored white and also has a greenish color intermingled into that white as well. And you will also find striping and also spottings in the color of magenta and fuchsia also incorporated in the blossom. Now the phenomenal thing about the blossom is it's very unique in the petal formation. And of course you are seeing a picture of it right now. So indeed it has quite a unique beautiful blossom and of course is also fragrant. And this right here is the species Phalaenopsis javanica. And I do have to say the blossoms indeed intrigued me. They are also a very unique in shape blossom, not looking too much like a Phalaenopsis at all. And definitely it has quite a tessellation pattern on the blossoms. And it also has a semi-transparent glow or a look to the blossoms as well. And looks very, very waxy. Now, of course, I've never had one before, so I am just going by my assumption. But definitely, it has a blossom that looks like it isn't quite fully opened. But that is how it blossoms, and I believe it adds to the uniqueness of their blossom. So, indeed, I am very excited to also see this bloom and smell the beautiful fragrance that is compared to violet. And the color combination on the blossom are just absolutely gorgeous. It reminds me of a sunset where you're seeing the orange blending into the fuchsia and the pinks. So definitely just very beautiful combination also in this very unique bloom. Definitely am excited about the Phalaenopsis javanica. And this right here, folks, is the Phalaenopsis species, Marie, and definitely has a beautiful, beautiful fragrant bloom on here, blooming in quite a dark magenta and pink and also white, and of course is very, very fragrant as well. And folks, what really has me jumping off the walls and completely doing backflips about these orchids right here is the fact that they have characteristics and traits that are so unlike the hybridized Phalaenopsis that we so commonly know. One of the characteristics, of course, is the fact that these can bloom multiple spikes and in abundance. Of course, it's all about their age and the health of the orchid as well, but they are known to create so many, many spikes. And also off of those spikes, they can create a multitude of keikis. So these are also known as baby makers, making lots of them. And that is how a lot of your growers can create these specimen-sized orchids because these create so many babies. And also another interesting point about these blooms or the spikes is the fact that these spikes can bloom over and over again year after year. So you definitely don't want to cut off those spikes because just as long as they're green, they are good to go. Now if they turn brown, of course, and they're very dry, then you can cut them off. But if they are green, they have the potential of continuing to bloom. So don't cut them off. And also these are known as sequential bloomers, known to be free flowering. Wow! 
and also they can bloom throughout the entire season so definitely they don't conform to a particular season and they can bloom throughout the year folks isn't that phenomenal why yes it most certainly is and that my friend brings us to the close of this holiday season orchid haul and as i stated before orchid santa has definitely came through and i would like to wish each and every one of you a very happy prosperous holiday season and of course happy happy orchid growing new year to one and all